Hi, I'm Rex Reedy uh, with Landmark Implement. I'm going to be talking about operations today. Hi, I'm Raleigh Sokol with Landmark Implement, and I'm going to be talking about the Haggy maintenance today. Okay, today we're going to start with the joystick. The top button will be the transom up and down, raise and lower the whole boom. These two buttons will be the in out, up and down buttons. The green button is the master on and off for liquid. The red button is the row in management button. You got two buttons on the side, which is the hydro up and down for speeds. You got your park brake switch here. You got your throttle switch here. This button here is your tank switch, your main tank switch. The red ones up here are your boom sections. This one and this one is your fence row nozzle. This one here is your rate control mode. So it's enabled for auto, manual. Here's your pump speed rate. So you can increase and decrease manually. Down here is your switch for your water on your boom and on your rinse tank. Here's your pump switch. Here's your agitation switch. Here's your auto boom fold switches. Here's your ignition switch. Here's the auto mirror. If your cab is a premium cab, it'll have this option on it. Back here, you'll have an audio plug-in. You'll have two uh, 12 volt uh, plug-ins and two USB ports. And up here, you'll have an emergency stop switch. It's used for emergencies only, not for parking. Here's the radio that comes in the cab. Here's your Bluetooth. Here's your digital readout on your uh, climate for your cab. On your steering column, you'll have your flashers, your running lights, your blinker switch. That also adjusts your lights, windshield wiper washer, and your horn. Your three adjustments on the steering wheel is this one over here. Which extends it, telescopes it. You've got the foot pedal to put it all the way up. And the knee adjustment, so the adjustment on the whole column. On the floor, you'll have two foot pegs and you'll have your decel decelerator pedal. In the premium cab, you'll get a leather 11 adjustments on it, leather seat, which is heated and air conditioned. On the maintenance side, I'm gonna go with the boom here. This is a 120 hybrid. I'm gonna show where all the grease circs are on it. Um, you have main grease circ here. You have one on each side down here for your hinge. And at the boom fold, um, we have your main grease circ here on the cylinder that folds the main tip back. We have them one on each lock valve, one here and one here. Make sure all this stuff gets greased weekly. Going on the outer boom breakaway, we have a chain here with a, with a cable. Um, if for some reason you're replacing this cable, we have a spring adjustment here that has to be 17 inches from the end of the ring to the end of the ring on the spring. That is the specification on that. On the maintenance of the engine, uh, we have what there is a air filter here for the 6.8 liter engine. Uh, the service interval on that is, it's gonna be monitored by the monitor in the cab. So when it tells you to change the filter, that's when you need to change it. Uh, or otherwise, in the book it says a thousand hours. On a hydraulic tank, it's a 34 gallon. We have a main internal filter. To actually get to that filter, you have to take these four bolts off pull the filter out and then you can put the filter back in and then you can also fill it up with oil there or there's a, an adapter you can put on a bucket to bucket fill it. Over here is your breather uh, once a year, clean them out or replace them. Your engine coolant is up here. Uh, every thousand hours, replace the engine coolant. On the side of the hydraulic tank, there is a rec recommendation list uh, for the engine oil, they recommend JD plus 52. For the engine coolant, it's a John Deere Cool Guard 2. For the hydraulic oil, we use John Deere High Guard. For planetary hub drives, we use the Mobile Trans AST gear oil. And for the grease points, it's just a SD polyurea grease. Under the engine, on the left side, we have your 
primary and secondary fuel filters. Uh, recommendation on that is change every 500 hours. We have a remote engine oil filter. Uh, that's also 500 hours. And then as we move forward, we have some hydraulic filters. We have a fan filter. We have a K-strain filter. Those are also all 500 hours. On the hydrostat, you have a, what they call a charge filter. Um, it's a spin-on filter. For this one here, you're gonna take a 24 millimeter inch to hold the nut on the back side and then use a, your oil filter inch to spin it off. If you don't have a wrench back here, this is gonna sp keep spinning on you. So you gotta have that to get the filter off. And then up, this would be the hardest filter of them all. It's in a tight spot on the right side underneath the cooler. This is your main case drain filter. Now this is the one you want to have a bucket underneath because oil will keep coming out uh, even after you have the filter off. So uh, it's one of those filters you want to spin off and spin on, spin a new one on right away. So now we're underneath the cab on the right side. Uh, this is going to be a pressure filter for your steering orbital. It's an internal filter. You're going to need a 15 16 wrench to spin it off. And that's also 500 hours. Right there is your air dryer filter. Um, maintenance on that is yearly or every thousand hours. Over here on your fuel tank, you have a, what they call a dev filter. That's supposed to be changed out every 3,500 hours or three years, whichever comes first. Over on the cab, we have a pressurized cab filter uh, right here. It's held on with a bunch of clips. Um, it's just a cartridge type filter. You, you clip, clip it, bring it down. Uh, just make sure when you put a new one on that your holes for the filter are towards the machine to keep the rainwater out. The another filter we have for the cab is what they call the charcoal filter. It's actually behind this plate. Uh, you'd have to take all four of these bolts off and get pull the whole assembly out to change that charcoal filter. That needs to be changed uh, yearly. So the maintenance on the greasing part of the legs is we, we have a grease bank here. Um, on these here, the towers get greased daily, the steering once a week, and the leg bearing once a month. On the leg bushings, we have a grease here, here it says weekly. Um, what I usually tell people is hit them once a day until grease comes out, this 40 PSI um, relief valve, then you know you have grease in there. Uh, also on this relief valve, once a year, take them out, clean them up, because once they get plugged with gunk and stuff, you will we'll push the seal out on the bottom of the leg. The grease we're gonna be using in this is just that SD poly grease. Um, on machines that have the auto tread adjustment feature, you're gonna to wanna to check the torque on these bolts. They're 25 foot pounds every 100 hours. Uh, it's gonna take a inch and a half wrench to get the lock nut and a three quarter inch Allen head, um, but they need to be torqued in a X pattern and what after you get done torquing to make sure your leg will come will move in or out going back on the ladder we have two grease circs we have one on the main hinge point here and then one on the la on the ladder cylinder uh, make sure we grease those weekly on machines that have the option side fill uh, these grease circs here very important to grease those daily they will freeze up on you otherwise on the torque hubs on the haggy uh, we use that mobile trans oil. Um, it needs to be serviced every 250 hours. And basically what you're gonna do is pull this plug here and this plug here and drain it. It takes about 50 uh, milliliters to fill them back up um, until it comes out over here. Just make sure you line up this line even. This machine has an optional stainless steel hubcaps, but if you'd happen to take this tire off uh, for any reason to put your floater tires on or um, to get a different set of tires on. The torque on the wheel and lug nuts are 500 foot-pounds dry. If you have any more questions on operations and maintenance of this machine, please contact your local Landmark dealer.